buggery, 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 get up on your feet. Well, hello and welcome to the DW Show again. You know, last week we missed a week. Uh, we were in Charlotte, didn't get to talk to you, so uh, we did a show for you on Tuesday. Thought I'd give you a little bonus round. And, and let me tell you why. I've gotten a lot of emails, I've gotten a few tweets about the end of the race uh, at Charlotte Sunday night. And I thought maybe you'd, you'd like to have, this is my take, okay? This is not the official uh, word that came down. This is my take on what happened at the end of the race Sunday night. Couple of things. First of all, people were a little upset about Menard pushing his teammates, Kevin Harvick and uh, I think it was Boyer or uh, or maybe it's Burton. I can't. Re I think it was Bo Boyer, uh, Burton and uh, Harvick, and and Menard was pushing them around uh, under caution. Do I? Th that's legal. Okay, that's legal. You can do that. You can't have any assistance on the white flag lap. When the white flag comes out, you have to finish the race under your own power. Now, in my mind, and to me, those guys took, really took advantage of the situation. We were going to go into a green-white checker. Everybody's out of fuel. I thought it was brilliant, to tell you the truth. I don't know who made the call. I don't know if Gil Martin did. I don't know if Richard Childress did. I don't know who made the call. Uh, but to push those cars around, save a little fuel, and that's all we're talking about. Look how close Junior came. What if somebody had pushed him around? And by the way, did you see him cranking his car? Now, we on our gauge, we have a little gauge that we, we calculate. It's a calculation. It's certainly not accurate. But we go by how many laps they should be able to run based on what they had done previous, prior to the, in the race. And our gauge showed zero. Remember I said that zero was for his heart rate? Well, I'm sure when he was trying to crank that car... Uh, he was wondering if it was going to fire back up. That's how low on fuel he was. And that was a good indication that it was going to be mighty, mighty close. Nonetheless, I just want to go back to the pushing thing. You can do that legally. I think it's uh, taking advantage of the situation, taking advantage of the rule. But after all, that's what we as competitors do. If there's a rule, we try to figure out how to use it to our advantage. So that worked out good for Harvey because that, that gave him a little extra fuel. And all those guys cutting engine off coast, cutting engine off coast, cutting engine off coast, that's just that's another thing you can do to save a little bit of gas. But I want to get to the why the yellow flag didn't come out. Uh, green, white, checkered. Uh, we know that cautions breed cautions. I mean, that's something that we talk about every week, uh, that if you start bunching these cars up, uh, that it's a good chance you're going to have another caution. NASCAR knows that. We all know that. And I think that went in partly into the decision making at the end of the race. So they drop the green, there's a wreck. Casey Kane runs out of fuel, uh, Jeff Burton gets spun out, cars are kind of all over the place, cars are smoking, but by the time they come back around to take the white flag, the track's clear. Now this is where you could say, well, if they had thrown the caution, Junior would have won the race. Yeah, maybe, but here's something you got to think about. So they, you have to cross the start-finish line. Junior would have had to because once they take the white flag, if something happens, a caution comes out, the race is over. So we know that. But you've got to maintain pace car speed. So he would have had to come all the way back around to the start-finish line. Would he have been able to do that if he had backed out of the throttle? Probably so. But, but listen, NASCAR doesn't know all this, and they don't take all these things into consideration. Robin Pemberton's up there. He's a former crew chief. He probably got an idea about fuel mileage and who's got what. But they don't know Junior's going to run out of fuel. And so if I were up there, this is me, okay? This is not them. They didn't tell me this. I'm just saying if I were up there and Junior's coming off the fourth turn to take the white flag, he's got a very, very comfortable lead. I'm assuming that he's going to be able to make another lap. Why would I throw the yellow flag to help him win a race? Then all of us or all of you, not all of us, all of you conspiracy theorists would have said, well, they helped Junior win a race. Does Junior want to win that way? Heck no. He wants to be able to drive into victory circle with his head held high. Just think about Martinsville. Would you like Junior to spun Kevin Harvick out and won a race? No, that's not Junior. Junior wants to be, he wants, he, he's a man of really great integrity, I think. And he would not have wanted that caution to come out 
and people would have said, well, the track was clear. Why did they throw the caution? The only reason they threw it was to help Junior win. So that's where NASCAR was. And they don't think like we do. They look at the whole field. They don't look at one car. So they see Junior go by. He's still up to, up to speed. He's got a great, he's got a comfortable lead. He's going to win this race on his own without anybody assisting or without anything to, to tarnish the win. Does, does he make it back? Well, we all know he doesn't. He runs out of fuel and Kevin Harvick wins the race. But that's the reason. The, the corner workers were telling John Darby and Mike Helton and those guys, the track is clear. Burton got cranked up. He was gone. There was, and there, there's precedent for this. Think back to Daytona when Kevin beat Mark Martin. Cars wrecking everywhere, but they were wrecking behind them, and NASCAR let the race play out. There's been a number of situations where they let the race play out. You don't want to interfere with the, with the natural progression of the race, and a caution at that point would have, would have cost a lot of people. I think a lot more people would have run out of gas than did if they'd have had a caution and had another green-white checkered or whatever. So I just wanted to clear that up for you. Pushing, other than when you take the white flag, a teammate or a, a somebody, a, a, if you want to cooperate with somebody and give them a shove, you can. White flag comes out, you can't. So that's perfectly legal. There was no reason to throw a caution. The track was clear when Junior went by. So just a couple of things I wanted to clear up for you. I know that a lot of people were concerned and I just thought I'd clear that up for you. I don't know if you noticed uh, Sunday night, we're talking about hot weather and and uh, these, these cars today are hotter than, than probably cars were before, and I think the ethanol fuel is maybe even adding a little bit more engine heat uh, to the race cars. But did you notice uh, Sunday night, we had a little thermometer in Tony Stewart's car, but it was way up here, up by his headrest. That, I think, the 130 was uh, some, uh, right around 130 degrees at that, at that, where that thermometer was. If you put that thermometer down where his feet is and where all the heat boils up out of the engine compartment, I guarantee it'd be at least 20, 25 degrees hotter. So that was a great gauge, tell you kind of what the temperature's like inside the race car, but you put, your, put that thing down by the driver's feet and that's why they get burned and that's why, you know, uh, drivers are dehydrated and worn out. And uh, we just, we, we try to give you a visual to let you know what these guys go through for four and a half hours. And Sunday, it's supposed to be 90 degrees in Kansas. These guys are going to be burning up inside those cars. A couple other things uh, about Sunday night. Kevin Harvick has had two wins going into that race. Wins this year mean more than ever. Right now, uh, if, if things were to stay the way they are, Jeff Gordon would be in the chase because he has a win. Kevin Harvick now has three wins. Kevin Harvick could afford to run out of gas Sunday night. Kevin Harvick could roll the dice because most likely those two wins, and now three for sure, would lock him into the chase. And that's what these guys uh, are going to be looking at as they go down to the 26th race. People with wins will be able to take more chances uh, because they feel like with wins, they'll be locked into the chase. So. Wins mean more now than ever, and I think what you're going to see when we get closer to the 26th race at Richmond, you're going to see teams doing exactly what Harvick and them did uh, Sunday night. They're going to take more chances. They're going to gamble. They're going to try to do two tires, no tires, fuel, whatever they got to do to try to get a win. So uh, now remember, you have to be in the top 20 in points. Uh, you know, you can't be uh, Regan Smith and be outside the top 20. You can't be uh, Trevor Bain and be outside it. You got to be in the top 20 in points for those wins to count. But uh, that's one of the things I think we're seeing as we go down the road here. Wins are going to be more significant than ever, uh, and it's going to have a big impact on the, on who gets in the chase and who doesn't. And by the way, uh, as you know, Kansas is our last race uh, on Fox, NASCAR on Fox. But hey, hang with ODW. We'll do the DW show every week. We got Twitter. I, I write a column, a story every week on uh, All Walter uh, at foxsports.com. So you will be able to keep up. I, I look, and just like today, I'll fill you in, man. I'll give you the inside scoop. I'll give you my take. I'll give you what the way I see it. And trust me, I got black helicopters that have followed me my whole life. So if you want to talk conspiracy, you just come see old DW. Because I sometimes see things just, I don't know why, just a little different than everybody else does. And for you, that's a good thing.